Alzheimer's is a condition that is impacting more and more people, something that is especially felt here in Colorado. Yes, a lot of families are affected and there's new research being done in our state to better understand the disease. We have Jim Hurley with the Alzheimer's Association in the Rocky Mountain region. Thank you for being here. And also Dr. Neha Loda, a professor at CSU and the director of the college's neuroscience and rehabilitation lab. So Dr. Loda, let's just jump right in. Um, your research, what makes it different when diagnosing? Yeah, so the current methods of diagnosing somebody with Alzheimer's disease primarily, primarily rely on clinical documentation of you know, decline in cognitive function. And that is typically reported by an individual who has Alzheimer's or their family members. So researchers around the world and scientists are trying to come up with biomarkers. Hmm. This is something that you can measure and accurately diagnose if somebody is going to have Alzheimer's ahead of time. My lab, what it's trying to do is we are, going, we are trying to rely on accessible and cost-effective measures of identifying somebody's likelihood of having Alzheimer's by the way that they move. And this is very different from what has been done in the past. Um, there have been a lot of brilliant scientists who worked on blood-based biomarkers and brain imaging biomarkers, but these biomarkers are not always easily accessible to everybody. They are costly and they are invasive. So we are trying to take a stride in the direction where we can make it accessible for everyone. I mean, that's huge. I like know. this could really yep. change the game. And you have been working on this for a couple of years. Any early results you can share? Have you, you know, gathered anything that's yeah. worth sharing with us? So first of all, I'm really grateful to Alzheimer's Association for funding this initial work in my lab at Colorado State. Um, it is a little bit too early to talk about the emerging findings, but what I can tell you is uh, we are working with our collaborators at Washington University at St. Louis and uh, South Dakota School of Mines, and what we are finding is that the weekly driving patterns can give us imp important signal about you know, changes in cognitive function. So, for example, if an individual is taking lesser known routes and has lesser exploratory behavior in terms of their driving and spatial navigation, that can be an early sign that something is going on in the brain and that we need to take a look and see if we can find and, out more. And I'm wow. so glad that you are. And Jim, you know, why does the Alzheimer's uh, Association want to fund research and diagnoses when it's an incurable disease? Why is that important for you guys? Well, it's essential because up until just a couple of years ago, we did not have medications that could be used to treat people who are actively dealing with Alzheimer's. Now we do. We have two FDA approved medications, but you can only get them if you've been diagnosed. So unless people in the, on the research side are finding you before you're diagnosed, because once you're diagnosed, things start to change and often will change rapidly. But if we can find them preclinical before they would have been noticed otherwise, some of these medications have been proven to be very effective in slowing the progression of the disease. And then hopefully someday we'll find a cure, but we're still not at that stage yet. And research, especially these days, right, in this administration, research is so funding, is so competitive. Yeah. How do you kind of keep your research at the forefront and keep going and keep it funded so that you can make these strides and yeah. changes? You know, although the funding landscape is changing, but the Alzheimer's disease requires research now and now. And so for that reason, what we are trying to do is we are trying to leverage our community and the support from the community to continue doing this work. For example, my lab does some outreach events and we have private donors who are real champions of the work that we are doing and they help us fulfill this gap between the funding, research funding from federal administration being available to now so that we can show some promising findings like we just talked about that people then get excited about and want to fund. So there are many ways to support the research um, other than just you know uh, relying on fund, federal funding. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing too, I mean, Obviously, Jim, you know this more than anyone. Um, a lot of people are hoping with all this research at the end of the day that there will be a cure. Do you think that there are steps to get us closer to that point? Do you think we will see it in our lifetime? We always hear little tidbits in the news, but coming from you, I think that you know our viewers would like to hear that. I think what we're gonna see, the progression we've seen in my 10 years with the Alzheimer's Association is that Alzheimer's may be more like heart disease than like this incurable disease that's been first diagnosed in, in 1908. 
that we're seeing better diagnosis, we're seeing medications that can slow it. And so if like heart disease, if you can take something for your cholesterol, if you can be diagnosed early enough with the, you know, the congestion in your heart or in your, in your arteries, you can take a statin to help slow it down. You can do other things, diet and exercise are key, and frankly, what's good for your heart is good for your brain. And we're gonna see the results of a study, a two-year study coming out later this month that is going to document how effective those lifestyle changes have been. It could be working longer to keep your brain engaged. It could be exercising more. It could be you know, eating less highly processed foods. There's a number of things that can be done. So I think what we're probably going to end up with is a cocktail treatment of things. We may not get the cure to bring people back from Alzheimer's, but if we can slow it enough that something else will be the ultimate cause uh, of our passing, then, then that's a success. Then we can live with it successfully. Well, thank you both for the work that you're doing. Yep. I mean, because this is such a debilitating, devastating yep. disease that takes families, I mean, and just changes their lives forever. So thank you. And thank you for being here. Our it's pleasure. a pleasure to be conducting this kind of work at the forefront of science. Thank you for having us. You're